man is the only creature that has the legitimacy through his spirit to operate in the spirit realm and through his body to operate in the natural realm. Only man, no other creature in the entire creation of God has that capacity. Even God himself has decided to limit himself to the spirit realm because the Bible says God is spirit. It therefore means that if God operates in the natural without the permission of man, he has trespassed. If God had said that he had given men the earth, if after saying that, if God comes into the earth without man's permission, that is trespass, violation. Man is the only creature that has the legitimacy through his spirit to operate in the spirit realm and through his body to operate in the natural realm. Only man, no other creature in the entire creation of God has that capacity. Even God himself has decided to limit himself to the spirit realm because the Bible says God is spirit. It therefore means that if God operates in the natural without the permission of man, he has trespassed. If God had said that he had given men the earth, if after saying that, if God comes into the earth without man's permission, that is trespass, violation. Uh, good day. Uh. This uh, video, I will try and look briefly into into the teachings of uh, of uh, the young man. Uh, he says his apostle Osayi Arume or something like that. Apostle uh, Apostle Osayi. Or a Roman. Um, actually, I I want to I want to say a few things. Uh, maybe this is one of those uh, times, rare times, as the history of the videos that we have done can be shown. This must be one of those rare times when we did not uh, pick on the teachings of the, the Nigerian big names. God giving us uh, his grace, we will once a while, we will, we will, we will look at, the, at what their, their children at what their children actually teach. All of this, of course, by now you know, is done by actually looking at the doctrines of the Bible itself and comparing what the Bible teaches with what these people teach. And the other thing I want to say is, I want to let you know that I take no pride in tearing down anybody's uh, uh, ministry, so to speak. I take no pride, no particular pride in it. I, I am operating under a special grace of God. I and the grace of God, I want to tell you, is not peculiar to me. It is available to everyone who sincerely seeks God for God's sake, not for any other thing. It's available to everyone who is truly born again. That is what I'm saying. If you, the day you actually do meet the Lord Jesus Christ, you discover that actually there are some passages of the Bible, like Isaiah chapter, 
I think it's chapter 35 verse 8 in the Old Testament where the prophet was talking about the travelers on the highway of holiness. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 I think much of Isaiah 35 is on is on those travelers. The travelers on the highway of holiness. In verse 8 of Isaiah chapter 35 you see where God through Isaiah said that the wayfaring men those who those who will be traveling on that highway of holiness even though they are fools they shall not hear therein uh, it's important that you let that sink in um of course i'm going to paste it on the on the video when this video, video is produced but you should read it and take time on it that god had promised by his majesty that the travelers on the highway of holiness shall not make mistake on that way even though they are fools in spite of our ignorance the bible says we shall not err that is what the bible says there's a lot of things that are that are special and specific about true christianity this is one of them the lord jesus christ repeated that particular passage by saying that the prophets had said I think it I think it is in the book of uh, John chapter 6 that the prophet had said that God was going to teach everyone that will come to him in such a way that they will all know God God was going to teach us in such a way that you will not need anybody to tell you no God, no God because they all shall know me the spirit of God is the foundation of my ability to look to hear a teaching on spirituality any spirituality Particularly, if the spiritual person, if the person says that he's teaching the Bible, to taste it in my mouth, so to speak, put the teaching in my mouth and taste it and see whether it is something I can swallow or something I must spill out very quickly. It is the Spirit of God that does that for me. What I'm telling you is that there's nothing peculiar about it with me. It's not, there's nothing. It is what God promised everyone that genuinely comes to Him. So please don't get the impression that this old man always comes with one fault or the other. And he always has a way of unearthing people's faults. But that's not really true. What I'm saying is that the Spirit of God will make these things clear to you. If you watch my videos and it has not occurred to you that God can teach you these things by himself, it is God you must go to. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. You must go to. And you must believe that He's going to teach you by His Spirit. And the same thing applies. If you watch my videos and you discover that you are antagonistic 
against what I'm saying. I can tell you categorically, you are not a Christian. If for whatever reason, you have cause to fight, something stirs in your mind against my teaching that you must listen to every human being and check what they say against what is written in the Bible. If anything stirs your mind against my teaching, you are not a Christian. You are not going to heaven. Do Please do get me straight about that. If anyone meets you on the road at any time of the day or night and asks you and tells you, young man, open your Bible, see what is written there and check what is written there against what Mr. A, B, C has been teaching. And for whatever reason, whatsoever, under the seven, you discover that you, your mind is steering you towards animosity against such a person. I'm not sure you are a Christian. You are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. It's as simple as that. What you should do is to take it as a warning from God that God, out of his own mercy, out of his own majesty, his own grace, is the one, is the one sending that person. No matter how lowly the person appears, no matter how highly he appears, if the person is asking you to check what is written inside the Bible, against what any human being says. It is God that is talking to you. Mr. Oh, don't let me say Mr. He prefers to be called Apostle. Apostle or Saye. And of course, you know, generally speaking, you know there is no Apostle again in the Christian faith. There is no Apostle. Uh, I'm just telling you that just things said by the way you understand mm -hmm. so that you know generally speaking your tentacles must come up immediately you see anybody call himself an apostle there's no apostle in the Christian faith but this particular young man I uh, was brought to my attention and uh, and I feel I should, because in a way, I feel I should make some videos, maybe one, maybe two. Uh, I will make them short, maybe 30, 40 minutes or 50. Uh, so as to highlight, so as to warn people generally. This particular uh, video on its own is, is based on one of his videos. Uh, which he named, which he called my encounter with an angel that shaped my calling. Listening to Apostle Osai, you might you generally be deceived because of his quoting the Bible often and often. You are more likely to be deceived that he's a Christian uh, because he quotes, he quotes the Bible quite often. I, 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 I had to listen to him for hours, maybe 10, maybe, I don't know, maybe 8, maybe 5, maybe 10, maybe 15, 15 hours to actually get what this man has been teaching. Uh, and of course, I came across a few of his uh, videos. My, uh, my eyes start, started opening once I began to see videos that he called out to bring God from your inside. That's one of his videos. How to bring God from your inside. God is inside your inside. 
I how anybody could could make a video on that and the person will say he's talking Christianity. Excuse me. How to bring God from your inside? God is in your inside. God is in your inside. The person that the Bible says that the heavens could not contain. The person that the Bible says that the heavens could not contain. The person that the Lord Jesus Christ said that the earth, the earth is his footstool. But our apostle was is teaching people how to bring him from your inside. And he's, he thinks he's teaching Christianity. Uh, there's another one he, he made. How to trap the dimensions of God. How to trap the dimensions of God. I, I, I'm not a mathematician. I, I just managed to pass, a, pass it in my necessary examinations. But maybe dimensions have anything to do with height with breath with depth so somebody is teaching you how to trap the dimensions of god how how you will how a human being will conceive of such and the person will think he's talking about god i do not know people generally when when you are young and you are ignorant you generally think that the world started on the day you were born you generally think that the world started with you because you are young and you are ignorant and you do not know the bible that's why you think that way let me give you a summary of what Apostle Osai teaches. Basically, what he teaches is part of the of the doctrines of the court in the 1940s and 1950s generally and early 1960s. The court was called the manifest sons of God court. I'm going to make sure you see that particular name very well. I'm going to retain it so that you see it. The manifest, the manifest sons of God. Court. That was what it, that's, that was what it was called in the sixties and early seventies. The court died down around early nineteen seventies. The manifest sons of God called. You still hear their teachings in some places. But basically that is what this apostle teaches for Christianity. The manifest sons of God called teaches a little advanced level that's what I'll call them. Advanced level of word of faith. That's what that court teaches. You might call it advanced level of word of faith. But their teachings are basically the same. It's only a little advanced. Of course, you've been hearing some of their teachings from David Edepo without realizing it. In some of the videos that we made on David Edepo, he strayed to the manifest sons of God called teachings. The basic thing they teach is that basically when you when you go down, they teach that the resurrection had occurred.
That's the general res resurrection. That it had occurred. Not, re not resurrection of Christ. Resurrection of the followers of Christ. And they are the resurrected saints. Whatever therefore the Bible wrote about what power, what privilege the resurrected saints will have when Christ comes. All those powers and privileges are already applicable to them. That is a summary of the teachings of that court. The manifest sons of God court. Briefly, we will look at the teachings of this apostle and you'll see for these next few minutes because I'm going to cut this video short so that I might produce the sequence to it. For the next few minutes, let us hear him in what it, it, the man teaches as his doctrines about man. As I said, this particular video is based on his video on his encounter with an angel that shaped his calling. An angel came to shape his calling. For your information, before I go far, Apostle Osai said Jesus had already visited him five times. He knew Jesus. Jesus had visited him five times. What they teach is that the Bible is not enough. That's the basic thing. In their ignorance, in their ignorance, they do not know that they are transgressing already God's law that you must not seek for any other thing after the book of Revelation was closed. That whatever is in the Bible, the Bible says that the Bible is complete. To teach the man of God, to make the man of God complete everything you need about God. You need to know about God, about godliness, about how to get to heaven. It's already written. And God put a seal with curses on special revelation. So our young man has built his ministry on visitations by angels, by Jesus. I don't know whether it's Jesus Christ. Well, of course, we know Jesus Christ does not visit anyone that teaches things that are against the Bible. He does not know. Mr. Osai does not know that the personalities visiting him are demons. He doesn't know. I pray that God will have mercy on him. Pray that God will have mercy on the people following him. Spiritual power is not only in God alone. Satan as 2 Corinthians chapter 11 tells us presents himself as the angel of light comes to us as the angel of light 
one of the main things that Satan does when he comes, first of all, is to tell you, I can give you information. Additional information, just a little. You can, you can be a little higher than what the Dick and the Harris, what they read in the Bible. Just take the information from me. Read the Bible a little if you must. But that is not very important. What is important is the new, inf new revelations that I'm going to give you. That is the trap that these people are falling into. May God have mercy on them. May God have mercy on the people of Nigeria. And everywhere, people are deceived, thinking that God is still producing theological teachings different from or in addition to what has been written and closed in the Bible. Let's listen to Apostle Osai. So the project man was conceived in the conclave of the Elohim and that's why it is captured let us make man. We would like to peep into that conclave and to find out the blueprint that God had in mind. What kind of creature did God intend to crystallize? As you go as you could see from that uh, small clip, Mr. Osai uh, is going to teach us a little about the origin of man. Uh, as, as I've just, as I wrote on the the line there, you must, I just want to take note of the word crystallize. I want you to take note of that word because you are going to come across that word a few more times. The word crystallize. Uh, maybe ordinary dictionary might tell you crystallize might mean, could mean that to bring into the open, something like that, to make clear the kind of being, the kind of creature that God was setting out to, to bring possibly from some sort of obscurity to limelight, to daylight, to daylight. You must take note of that because that is that is very important. We will see the importance as we go as we go forward. Let's listen to Apostle Osai. Differences. We'll begin our pilgrimage from Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six. Please stay with me. And God said, "Let us make man." in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. Now, I would like to draw attention to a few things that are in the scripture. First of all, in this enterprise of the making of man, hallelujah, are you with me? It's not the creating of man, it's the making of man. And the making of man has a few processes attached to it. Part of what was attached to the making of man is create part of what it entailed was formed between create 
and make. You must take note of that. That Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Is not describing the creation of man. It's describing the making of man. And of course, you see, I wrote uh, sophistry and narcissism. But these distinctions from our apostle, you must note them. Did the Bible make such distinctions that the making of man was different from his creation? Our apostle is trying to tell us that the creation of man is different from or possibly precedes his making. It's part of our it's, that is part of an old doctrine, which he thinks is he is the one propounding them. It's an old doctrine. You should know the sophistry. Because our man is making a distinction where the Bible recognizes none. Well, let's listen to him. Are you with me? So, but the project was let us what? Make man. So, please stay as we build, and God is going to help us in the name of Jesus. We must note the emphasis on make. On make, as, as the apostle lays the emphasis on make. We must know the emphasis. According to the blueprint of this creature that God was about to crystallize, this creature had to be in the image of God. And we need to understand what the image of God is about. Image of God. The two words, again, crystallize. And then the image of God. He will define to up for us and to us what those terms, what they actually mean. Crystallize. What God was about to crystallize. And what the image of God what it means. Pastor, you are a medical doctor, and most of the time when you enter into the theater, you want to perform a surgery, you normally use a glove. And your glove is in the shape of a hand because the intention of the manufacturer is that that glove will play host to a hand. So apparently, apparently there are some similarities between the relationship that exists between a glove and a hand and man and God. You might think, yeah? Well, let's listen to Apostle Osai come down with his, illust with his illustrations and what it actually means. Let's listen to him. If you were created in the image of God, you are such that you were designed to have the capacity to contact God. You were designed to have the capacity to contain God. Did you get that? Have you seen where his illustration of the of the glove and the hand. Where it is going? Did you really get what, what this man is saying? So apparently, you, you simply 
put God inside of you. You put God inside of you. Well, at times uh, some people might say yes. Christians have God inside of them because the Bible said that Christians are actually the temple of God. That is not the sense. That is not the sense in which our apostle is using his illustration. Our apostle does not use the illustration in the sense that God comes to inhabit his people in such a way that he is God, he is their controller, he is their Lord. That is not, that is totally different from what our apostle is saying. And you have to pay attention to him. It is in fact the opposite of what our apostle is saying. As I said, one of his videos, which you can check on the internet, is how to bring God from your inside. How to, how to use God, basically. You see, you are, the, you are basically the brain. You are the brain that guides God. He actually said much more than that, really. In this video, I do not know if we will get there, but I'm going to give you the link so that I can listen to him after watching this short intro. Yourself. He actually went further than you being the, the brain. He went further than that. You are the one that will control things. Let's pay attention to what this man is gathering people to teach them in the name of the faith of Christ. Just as I said the other day, concerning the hours upon hours of the teachings of Dr. Adeboye, basically what you will not hear from these people is the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. These people basically teach Christianity with scant reference to Christ. Just a sprinkling here and there. And see if you can teach Christianity apart from Christ. Apostle Osai teaches Christianity with reference basically to the control of his mind and to the spirit, whatever spirit he thinks is guiding him with the Bible being thrown in here or there to support fundamental teachings that are not derived from the Bible itself. Let's pay a little more attention to him, please. You were designed to have the capacity to manifest God. Did you get that? You were designed to have the capacity to manifest God. To manifest God. So, see a lion and tell lion, lion, stop there. Cobra, come forward. Let there be light. Of course, you know, Dr. Adeboye does some programs which he calls Let, let There Be Light. That is, that's, that's the advanced level of word of faith. Because they, they think that they are manifesting God. They think that they too, they can create God. 
It's part of the basic teaching that they teach. They think that since God could use his mouth, they too could just use their mouth. How it never occurred to them that what they are teaching, what they are purporting to do are things that are done only in covens by sorcerers. I don't know. So, he's manifesting God. Is you taking a stand against the forces of nature, commanding nature, walking on water, funneling poisonous snakes, entering the cages of wild animals, stopping the train, a moving train, by your hand. That is what the manifest sons of God doctrine, the cult, that this man is preaching. That is what they preach. So being designed to manifest God. You should note what he's saying. Man is not designed to give glory to God. Man is designed to wear his own glory. To mimic God in the glory. Man is actually designed to set up a rivalry with his maker. That's what that's what our apostle is teaching. He's not teaching any other thing. That is what he's teaching. You only need to pay a little attention to him. To know that what he's teaching with so gentle, supposedly humble words are actually the fundamental teaching of Satan himself. That what our apostle is teaching, they are basically the rebellion of Satan. Man is not made to give glory to God. Man is made to manifest the glory just the same way God does. These people think that God is a proud person and they only show their godliness by how proud they are. If, if you don't know that, that is satanism. I don't know whether you know anything about the Bible. Let's listen. You hear those words from the mouth of Apostle Osai. Because man cannot be understood outside of his design. He was created in the image of God. He was created after the likeness of God. Are you with me? All right. Please don't forget the key word in that scripture is make. 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 Let us. What? Make man. The word. As our apostle refers by us back to it, is make, make, make. It's not create. The key word is make. Let us make. It's not even the key word. Is not even God that is doing the making. The key word is just the is just the make. Let's listen. Let's pay a little more attention. So this is when the enterprise was conceived and the blueprint about this creature was defined. He was supposed to be an entity that will walk in the glory of God. And so God, one of the manifestations of his capacity is dominion. And dominion is an attribute of God. It means that this creature was designed to share in some of the dynamics of God. And that's why the reference for this creature is not himself, but the reference for this creature is God. Every other creature was created after his kind. In that, uh, that we share with God, 
his dominion. We are not made for the glory of God. We are made to basically project dominion. The issue is dominion. The issue is not the glory of our maker. The people who speak English, you know, they, they use a kind of a word they call narcissism. Narcissism. For that kind of idea. Man exists only for himself. Man was created for himself. That's, that's what this people teach. You are the center of the universe. And you, if you know anything about sin, you know that is the definition of, of the word sin itself. You are the center of the universe. It is not God. Every other thing revolves around you. Even God revolves around you. In this particular video, the source video to this, you hear this man repeating a terrible evil. That it is illegal for God to do anything on earth without man giving him an approval. You hear that? One of the one of the terrible sins of uh, Miles Monroe, you hear this evil man repeating the same evil. That the owner of this estate, the owner of the universe, needs approval from man before he can visit, before he can do anything. Actually, you know, on the front page of the True Christian Faith, dot com website I left it there for people to think no to think to think about that particular question which Christ is this place which Jesus is this which God are these people talking about which God are the word of it people the charismatic people the, the manifest sons of God people, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Muslims. Which God are they actually talking about? When they pick the Bible, because every one of these people says they originate from the Bible, including, including Islam. That question is fundamental. And until you can ask answer that question clearly in accordance with what is written in the Bible. What the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23, from verse 21 to verse 23, it will apply to you until you can answer that question. Of which Jesus am I worshipping? Because you are going to open your eyes. The day after you are dead. Face to face with Christ. And he's going to tell you. He never knew you. Until you can answer the question. Which Jesus am I following? Which Jesus is my Lord? Because these people mention Lord, Lord, Christ, Jesus. And they think 
that there is no specific definition of Christ. They think you can just say anything without defining. As if the Bible has not defined clearly who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Let's, little, let's listen a little more to Mr. Osai. That is to say that even a goat is more original than you. Because a goat was created after the image of a goat. But you were not created after the image of man. Your reference is God, not you. Are you still with me? Stay with me. Your reference is God. That means I'm beginning to operate maximally when I operate like God. I'm beginning to operate maximally when I operate like God. When I operate like God, not when I obey God, not, not when I live under the guidance of God, but when I operate like God. You can see we are talking of another faith masquerading as Christianity. We are talking of another faith, totally different, foreign, strange, opposite of biblical Christianity. It is the, it's the faith that puts me at the center. So you can see his definition of image and dominion, where you can see where it is going. I'm beginning to operate maximally when I operate like God. That's what that's almost a summary of what is people teach. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. As it is in heaven. So on earth. No way. No. For the manifest sons of God, for what they for what they taught in the early seventies and late sixties, that, that is exactly what they this is exactly what they taught. You step forward, you take control, you are in authority. Some of you would have heard of the story. I think it was around 1989, around that time, around 1989, between 1988 to 92, of an Aladura man that jumped into the lion Sioux cage in the University of Ibadan Sioux in Ibadan, in Nigeria, to give command to the, to the lion. And I am aware that there are some other people like that in America that bring uh, that bring rattlesnakes to the pulpit in order to demonstrate that they are acting like God. The Aladura man that went into the lion cage in the University of Ibadansu in Nigeria never came out to tell us his story. The lion was too mad for his foolishness. And I think the lion had a good meal that day of a kind of meat it had never been eaten. I'm also aware that many of these so-called pastors that bring live rattlesnakes to their pulpit in America 
they do not live to tell the story. It's from, it's from teaching such as this. I, I'm beginning to operate maximally when I operate like God. Where will you get that? From what part of the Bible will you get that? Is it from Paul or from Peter? I will tell you that they operate, they operate like God. They operate like God. Those ones, they will tell you that they were servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not setting up empires of comparison between them and the Almighty. For the opting time, let me tell you, these are not Christians. The people Nigerians call Christians are not Christians. Follow them at your own peril. Man is the only creature that has the legitimacy through his spirit to operate in the spirit realm and through his body to operate in the natural realm. Only man, no other creature in the entire creation of God has that capacity. I can, I can tell you categorically that that statement is not true. That statement is that statement is generally satanic. When these people talk about man operating in the spirit realm, what they are talking is basically satanic. It's actually witchcraft. Let me tell you something. If you take part in any spiritual thing, apart from something that God sanctioned, you are in witchcraft. And most spiritual things that God sanctioned, he actually initiated it. So, what Mr. Osai is speaking glibly is actually witchcraft, is sorcery. For you to attempt to participate in anything, in anything spiritual without God, initiating that participation, you'll be trafficking with demons. According to the Bible, you'll become an abomination before God. Your sin to start with. The consequences of your sin is that God and everything about God must destroy you. If you participate in anything that the Bible describes as abomination, you multiply your demise, your destruction, million times over. No. Man is only to operate here. The idea that you can operate in the spiritual realm is only from Satan. That's what the man is describing is astra strafu. Astra travel. That is what he's describing. What he's describing is incantations, trafficking with demons. It's not Christianity. You cannot participate in the spiritual realm. You are not spirit. You are not. There is only one God in the universe. The devil will want you to participate in the spiritual realm. The devil will want you to be able to say incantations and give you the impression that you are participating in the spiritual realm. You are not. No human being is participating in the spiritual realm. None. 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 Just get that from me. The sorcerers. The sorcerers. The witches and witchcrafts. People. They are being deceived to think that they are actually participating in doing anything. They are not. It is the devil that is giving them that deceptive kind of belief. Let's, let's hear again a little more about gross rebellion 
of Apostle Osai. Even God himself has decided to limit himself to the spirit realm because the Bible says God is spirit. It therefore means that if God operates in the natural without the permission of man, he has trespassed. If God had said that he had given men the earth, if after saying that, if God comes into the earth without man's permission, that is trespass, violation. Did you get a little glimpse into the depths of the rebellion in the heart of our apostle? Did you get that? If God, by any means, does anything on the earth by himself, he has trespassed. Mind that language. God has trespassed by doing anything on the earth. That tells you, that tells you just one thing. These people have got no idea who God is. They have got no idea whatsoever who God is. Let me, me, let me inform our apostle that God participates in the minutest thing going on on earth. Every fraction of every second he does because our God is omnipresent in fact the Bible actually calls, says that Christ said that the earth is his footstool that is that is Christ using a kind of language we can relate to that the heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool. So, but our our apostle and the and his followers, they think they can banish God from the earth, from the earth. The Bible says, as I said, God is omnipresent. Is everywhere, every time, at all times. You are just basically listening to just a glimpse of the depth of the hatred of God in the heart of supposedly somebody teaching about God. Let's give him a, a few more minutes, please. Now, the royal decree... Okay, okay, you don't believe. <laughs> Psalm 115, verse 16, you see the royal decree. 115, verse 16, please help me. Help me, please, technical man, so that I can run. One, one, okay, okay, no problem. Let's do it. Stay with me. Now, this is Psalm 115, verse 16. The Bible says, The heaven, even the heavens. This is the only scripture, apart from the book of Matthew, that recognizes the structure of the heavenly layers. Because when Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, that if someone was caught up into the third heaven, one of the scriptures that can justify what he's trying to say, the book of Psalms. And so when we say the heaven, even the third heaven, the heaven of heavens, it was is actually referring to the third heavens. He said that is where God is domiciled. The heaven of heavens. Or the third heavens is where God is domiciled. And the Bible says, and the earth has they given unto the sons of men. This is a royal decree. If God had said that he had given men the earth. If after saying that, if God comes into the earth without man's permission, that is trespass, violation. You with me? Yes, sir. 
Because the Bible says that God has exalted his word above his name. That is to say that God himself, when God speaks, his words become law and he himself becomes subject to it. So if God now says that the earth belongs to the sons of men, it means he will be in violation if he tries to intervene without man's allowance. Did you hear that satanic statement? God's words become law and he himself becomes subject to it. And the, the prosecutor, the person who will hold God to his word, is our apostle because once words come out of the mouth of God, God Himself becomes a slave to it because being subject means slavery, means slavehood. Pardon my English, being subject as Mr. Osai is using it and as rebellious and satanic people use it it actually means slavehood god himself is subject to his word and he cannot do anything once his words leave his mouth let me tell you categorically they are talking of a god that they form in their heart they are, do, they are talking of a God that, wa, that was molded by Satan. It's not the God of the universe they are talking about. The God of the universe is the sovereign. He is the judge. So he's the one that determines what shall, what shall happen. He's the one that determines truth. He's not any rebel. No. He's not any satanic person. I'm going to put some Bible passages in this place for you. So that you see the independence, the sovereignty of God over everything. No matter whatever the rebels think about. At what instance? I shall speak concerning a people, concerning a nation that I will plant them, I will bless them. If they turn against my word, me too, I shall turn against them and I shall uproot them. These people don't know God. They do not know who the sovereign of the universe is. They are talking of their own idols. God's words do not bind God to the level where you can do anything, where you can even claim his property. As this this rebel is saying is doing, where you can claim the earth and say he cannot even come here. God's words never, never. God God is in total control. That is one basic thing that you learn when you become a Christian. That is that is God is in total control of His universe, of every minute space and time inside of it and eternity in it the true god is in total control is in total control of the the whitening the whitening of the hair on your head is in total control 
That's what Christ. That's what the Bible says. But these are not Christians. Let me repeat it. A million times. These are not believers in Christ. These are occult people. Who hear voices from sources apart from the Bible and pretend that they are talking, they are hearing from the true God. They do not. They do not hear from the true God. They don't. Nobody who, minima, who minimizes the majesty of the owner of the universe will say the kind of thing this man is saying. Let me see if we can hear one or two more things. But that should, that should serve a notice to you. When I tell you that there is nobody who follows charismatic Pentecostal word of faith manifest sons of God teachings that is not in occultism you've got to take note of that the Bible is the only thing that is true that we know about God it, it totally disagrees with what whatever these people teach. If I operate like a man, it means that I've fallen from my godness. Can a can a claim to godhood be more emphatic? Can a created being be more emphatic in claiming he is a God? If I operate like a man, it means I have fallen from my Godness. You can see that what this person is teaching is the advanced level, as I told you, of the word of faith. Is the advanced level of the word of it satanic teachings? If I operate like a man, it means I have fallen from my godness. So he's basically a god. Even though he disavowed. The teaching that is a spirit, he believes that he's a god. And the insult you must never pass on him is calling him a man. That is the insult you must never pass on Apostle Sai is to call him a man because. Calling him a man means that you are asking him to forget his godness. Forget that he's a god. Let me see if we can take one, one or two more clips. And I'll close this particular video. Take quite a few more. Maybe one or two more that I'm going to make from this is teaching. The purpose, as I said, is to cause, to help whoever is privileged to see this video, to check the Bible and listen to the words coming out of the mouth of every one of these people. I'm seeing the majesty of God. When I read the Bible, and the Lord said that everyone will be justified or will be condemned by the word they speak, by the word that comes out of their mouth. I'm saying that yeah, God knows, always knew 
whom he has created. That our mouth will regurgitate our belief. So forget about the confessions. What do you actually believe? Your mouth will say it out one time or the other. That is why it is important. If you are not sure, you know that Jesus Christ. If you are not sure, your, your sins are forgiven you. You should pray until the Spirit of the Lord tells you your sins are forgiven. And the day the Spirit of God tells you that, from that moment, it becomes almost possible for you to make this kind of errors. The Bible says, as foolish as you can be, you will not make errors on the highway of holiness. As I said, let me see if I see one more, one more, one more of these clips. Otherwise, I just close it here and I do another video on the teachings of this deceived person who is gathering people about him, telling them he's an apostle. Before I close this uh, video, I want to use a few seconds to to tell those of you whom God has touched or is touching through this little work. I want to draw your attention to the fact that this work needs a lot of resources. Uh, we must begin to weigh the value of the souls of our people. Because if what I'm telling you, if it is true, then you must know that the hundreds of millions of people, maybe the hundred, the, the hundred of thousands and the millions of people who are deceived and who are being deceived every day in our country, in Nigeria alone, apart from other parts of the world, they must be told about the true gospel of Christ. They must be told the true gospel of Christ. If anything about Christ is important to you, then you must know that people must be made aware of the truth of the gospel. And they must be made aware of the fact that what they have been having as Christianity is actually not Christianity is actually basically from the occult. The devil spends millions of dollars every year to keep the lies in the limelight in Nigeria. They retain the loan spends more than two million dollars they spend between two to trillion dollars every year on publicity to publicize lies they redeem the law and we wish that anytime any of our youths on their internet they get information about the faith, the true faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm waiting for your contribution. I want people to open Linda EKG blog and see the contact of where they can read about 
the truthful. I want people to open Naira land and see every day, every moment, and see where their attention will be drawn to their eternity. If God has blessed you, I'm asking every one of you to think about contributing financially to make our people know the truth. It might be the best investment any of you will ever make in all eternity. Apart from you knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ himself said it. He said that you should put your resources where thieves or cockroaches cannot approach. As of today in Nigeria, there are very few places you can invest in the government in the gospel apart from spreading the truth about what has been going on in Nigeria all these years. So think of how you can contribute to this effort. Our youth, our young men, our men and our women, the old and the young should be made aware of the truth. Everybody, basically, now goes on the internet. Let's put it on the internet so that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>